Nice. Fun. It was cool. Sounds like a good time. I'm sure this TVT is going to be a good time as well. It's the one and the final best of three today. Has been a long one. Not super long, obviously. We were pretty quick in Europe, so we're on time coming into Americas. As we get into this in the top left-hand corner, the Red Terran from Berserk Resports is Foxer. And his opponent in the bottom right-hand side, it is El Diego Kelasur. Bit of a beast. It's SUV, okay. Down the bottom of the map, is that a second barracks? I think so. Yeah, I like it. And drop it in here so get that ready to rumble get that on the go and that's there we gonna go. be a little bit of pressure i like it because you know this kind of build it's not overly committed it's not like oh my god i gotta kill him but it gives you control of the game early it can give you some good map control if that's what you're all about i think that puts you in a pretty darn good spot so i like this yeah the only reason i don't love it is you're doing it to kelaser you know like like i could see you know if you if you give me this game and you change the names and you tell me one of them is kelaser i think it's probably kelaser against special doing the proxy or kelaser against maru or someone like that doing the proxy right so i think he's gonna have a lot of uh, experience with this with this sort of style i even wonder how much he does to account for it as he is oftentimes used to being the underdog in um yeah. in the international in the international sense and likes this sort of solution mm. that's uh, a good way of saying it as a factory here from kelzer then so his reaper will pop and he will go out on the map scout and the cool thing about that barracks because it's not like proxy t-rex it's not like a a full proxy so it's not going to be in one of the more common places like over to the right hand side here for example mm -hmm. so uh that's definitely a, a little thing to note let's just get ourselves the no factory and then they're going down and that's, that's okay yeah. that is a Weird. proxy factory as well okay we we committing now huh we are committing now so it's it's i mean it's looking it's looking pretty scary here as now the reapers are gonna go in and i mean this command center will likely have to fall foxer needs that reaper man manages oh. not to get it somehow oh that's tough okay oh, you can turn around for it actually the grenade ends up killing it Beautiful start for Foxer here. If he can disengage without losing these Reapers, it'll be massive for him. The grenade is there. Oh my god, if he could have gotten that second Reaper, it might have just been lights out. Yeah, especially with the follow, because, you know, there's going to be aggression coming from this from Foxer very soon. Well, we mm. have ourselves. The, the Reapers continue to come across. I gotta go for it, gotta go for it. Or is uh, Cyclone enough? I'm not sure how this fares, actually. The four oh, Reapers are going to decide to dive in. Dies. And they will okay. pick up the Cyclone big. Yeah, now gets up the ramp, yeah. kills a Marine. This is snowballing hard. Beautiful. Foxer has taken himself a great position. SCVs go down. He gets the Reaper as well. Oh, Caps. Wow. There's basically no units here. Hellazer's in a world of trouble, and he's going to be up against a Hellion soon as well, so that's going to help a lot for Foxer, who's in a great spot wow. here in game one. And he is tuned in as well. I mean, you saw the grenade attempting to, to, to yeah. bounce over a, uh, a Cyclone that would be emerging, and he was, I mean, like a couple of seconds off, but it really shows that he's really, you know, dialed in to where he's looking for everything to happen, like, in advance, and that's a good place to be. He, he He's definitely feeling himself right now, and he will take a deserved game one as the massive underdog in this series, Foxer. Wow. Good stuff, mate. Nice one. Nice Good stuff, that, mate. Uh, that was, yeah, very nice. Yeah, I like that. That was cool. All right, so Foxer comes in, and he's going to be able to grab himself a first game victory, Cat. So we already have a little bit of an upset on the table as uh, the opening match of America's Fox uh, for these guys. Obviously, we're four matches deep, but uh, Foxer goes 1 0 up, and Eliza is going to have to show us what he's got planned. And obviously, Foxer is now, you know, just saying, hey, I'm going to get into this game early. I'm going to disrupt. I'm going to be not letting him play his game plan. I'm going to get there early and show off my little bits of micro that can give me the advantage, which is great to see. Yeah, and again, I mean, that was that was, that was was cool because Foxer is a player that was coming into this not overconfident, right? Not thinking I'm going to win necessarily, but I can win. And of all the opponents that I could have gotten, I'm glad that it was Kelleser, right? And you really need that little bit of belief to really, like, push you in practice and really, like, have you prepare something and, and then, you know, not be too nervous and... and and, uh, and and crash and burn when when it's starting to go right as so many players do right so Fox are there holding his composure and uh, and executing really really well 
to steal one from Kelazur. Now, can he make the miracle happen and, um, and you know, get the, the full on upset? What do you think, where did you? Can he get the upset? Honestly, I feel like yes. I mean, TVT is an aggressive matchup. If you come in showing aggression like that and showing the ability to kind of snipe and, you know, take initiative, to me, that's a lot of the skills you need to win in a TVT. So, in that regard, like, yeah, he makes me believe with what, how, you know, just played out in that first game. And yes, you know, it, it comes down a lot to that initial catch and everything. So, you can mm. argue that, you know, maybe it's not going to go that way this time. But I feel like the, the baseline level there was pretty decent. Is in the bottom right side, up 1 0 in this best of three, it is Foxa. And looking for a comeback, it is in the top left-hand side for R8 Esports, Diego Schwimmer Kelathur. Inspired name by Keltusad and something else. Something that ends in super, I think. <laughs> you think? Because I can see where the Keltusad comes comes in, you know, it's the Kel part. Yeah. Yeah. We just need uh, we just need some info on the rest of it, huh? We just need uh, some info on the Azure. So yeah. I mean, someone in chat knows. They're already like, "Oh my God, how can you not know the lore of the World of Warcraft?" Man, sometimes I just don't. Sometimes I I know the Lich King, and that's it. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Do you know the lore of the World of Warcraft? Uh, very little bits of it. Like not yeah. a lot, you know. It's a fair this. thing to, um, yeah. I this played, could be the I, final game of the day, Worthy Joe. Oh, yeah, no, no, this could, this could you be. You played a, for a while? I, yeah. I, I feel like we're having two conversations on delay here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, I answer one we question, are, you start are. the it next convo. It, it is the final game. Yeah, I'll sneak in the next one while we're okay. having this one. We've threaded into a, a triple conversation. Yeah, no, this this could Let's, be our uh, final focus game. back on the game. But I do yeah, think. Right um, after you tell me about the world of work, no? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm done. What? <laughs> what are you my talking brain, about? My brain's too slow for this, mate. Brain is too okay. slow for this. Which is why you stopped playing the World of Warcraft. Yes, I stopped playing because my brain was too slow for the Starcraft. I see. It made my brain slower. Look at these Reapers, though. They're pretty fast and out on the map. Mm -hmm. Looking for each other now as this one will position itself. We'll see the SCV as well coming, so that is intended to soak up a shot. Foxer now is going to be uh, tucking himself back in until the second Reaper arrives. Trying to bait a little bit now, but will likely be at the cost of one of his SCVs. I'm gonna actually ignore the SCV okay. of Kalasur, who, who manages or chooses not to commit, so it's gonna be a one to one for one trade. And in fact, a better trade for Foxer as his SCV does end up surviving. Yeah, 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 Much like that the Lich neat. King. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's gonna keep bringing like much Bow, like uh, references into this all the time now. That's the yeah. The problem is I don't really have enough. Arthas, Arthas is the Lich King. Yeah. I knew it. See, I should have gone with that. Should have trusted my instinct. Trusted my gut. Trusted the gut. <sighs> you know enough. Instead, you instead here enough. we are. Fox are ahead. A couple of workers. Where did you? What do you make of that? Yeah, just good start, right? Good bit of micro at the, uh, the front of this, so... You look at what's being lost. I mean, Kelazer lost an extra CV. Pretty much come what it comes down to. Yeah, also traveled the map with his uh, extra SUV for, for a little bit of time, so... You know, that time is uh, worth a dollar a second or so on the on the SUV, so you can imagine that you're renting it whenever you send it out on the map. It's a cool way to think about it. You never thought about it that way. I never thought about it that way. And now we have. And we're better, we're better people for our cats, you know? Yeah, like person, I huh? think so. As do I. And now here we go. You know who's a better person? Foxer. He's about yeah. to um, bring up huge upset here as he's uh, loaded in a tank and four marines onto a Medirac that is bloodthirsty as can be. And if we look at the setup for Kelasur, he just sieged a tank. So that's pretty. That's a pretty good setup, I gotta say. But yeah. if you're a Foxer, maybe you scout it, and then you do. Or this works too. No, don't go in, though. Be careful. Pain. Okay. Gotta be a little bit careful. There's a Raven, though. Yeah, that's There's the problem, Raven, right? Though. With this sort of tank, right? Because the one Matrix is gonna shut you down. And sometimes even just the uh, 
placement of an auto turret can mess up the tank so much. It wastes a shot, and then you get the jump on it. Yeah, it's nice to put some pressure you in here, but I'm not sure how far this is really gonna go. You gotta get out. You gotta get out. Nice, nice, nice. He's he's choosing to get out now. Nice. Okay, that was good. I mean, that was good, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, because no, like, he was perfect. about to die for sure. Yeah, that's that the right was time perfect. to get out of that. Perfect right? disengage. Good Hello. Timing. Well, CC is uh, dropping really down. He really is dialed in. I'm really believing. Hello, Zer just went straight to that third CC, mate. He's just like, oh, you were just here? Cool, I'm going to put my third CC in the front of it all. Lovely. Oh, I like this siege position. So conservative, right? Like, not looking to overextend, to cover too much ground. Just saying, you know what? That's a free supply depot. I'm going to take it. I like it. Take those. Vikings yeah. now angling to poke at the Ravens. We take also, a, a pretty nice move. That's a nice little position, right? A couple tanks just kind of come to the front. The Vikings all gathering together. Just getting settled down as we do see that stim pack coming up as well. So we continue to bring that into oh. play. Oh, I'm liking the way they I mean, could we get a Liberator out? Oh, I mean, Liberator starts! Gonna, yeah, when Liberator starts, the air control is good because we got this double starport star cat, so we can really put the pressure on. So he's going to keep the action yeah. up. You know, I, I really felt like this was a mistake from Kalazur building I'm the CC here. Like, why would you build the CC there it when was. your opponent showed that you wanted to be aggressive? Mistake, and that's going to lose him the third base advantage. Oh, Kalazur's making mistakes. Oh my, oh my, is it happening at 2-0 of all things? Is it, is it at all possible? But now the Ravens are, have actually had enough. And now they are dropping the auto turrets. Kellas or uh, manages okay. To, okay. to completely decimate this uh, this breaching. Unfortunate for Foxer. I mean, if he could have mirrored <laughs> those uh, those uh, ravens with yeah. the Vikings, maybe you know, kill one before, or at least kill a couple by the time the the attack has been executed. But unfortunately for him, he he is uh, dislodged without. Uh, any notice and Galasur now in a very strong position potentially. Here comes the, the, the very nice liberator that his air control should have bought him, but not yeah. in the position that he wanted it to be. Trying to shoot down those ravens from afar is a neat play, but it does look as though Galasur just coming full force across the map right now. Combat shield has started up as well for Galasur, so he's going to continue through. And the problem is for Fox is so much of this was kind of reliant on this push, although I guess he still cancelled the third base, gets his own third up behind this, so... We're still playing here, right? We're not in too much trouble. Yeah, those Ravens are kind of useless for now as well. And they're very likely to die to a poke here if the Vikings can find them. Foxer has to continuously uh, continue continue to, to look for, for those pokes there. Because any one of them will be a unit dead. And it's actually killing a unit that's better than your Vikings. But the Marines oh. do offer nice coverage. Uh, yeah, you gotta stay covered here right now. Gotta be real careful. Oh, here we go. Oh. Ah, oh, thought that was gonna be a raven. Um, these Click ravens it. are low, by the way. Okay, we're gonna get one. Clicked. We're gonna get two. That yeah, one didn't get a spell one. cast off, but that is a uh, oh, matrix. Okay, the tank is saved. That's enough. A huge save onto a disabled tank. I mean, that that he has a liberator, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, if the Liberator can live through and siege up on those tanks, oh. he can clear this position, but he needs to win in the you skies. No, the Liberator oh, goes down. Oh, no. Yeah, he's losing so many That's SUVs so as well. And yeah, Kalaza. the tank is also not being tended to right now, sadly. Yeah, a has little bit, yeah, discombobulated. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. This, I mean, this kind of still fell close. We're oh. going to land for go for the tanks, which we will get rid of. We're going to get rid of the last few Marines. But you're 20 workers down. you got to go across the map okay. now as Foxer. Like, you got to send it. I think so. He's yeah, you have force, to send though. it. You, you, you I don't think he does. <sighs> okay. okay. He, he I mean, could. he just wanted to spend his money, I guess. He could just try and build back into this. Maybe that isn't the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Not 20 sure SVs behind. Yeah, I mean, his economy is in a, in a rough position for now. And he had 40 army supply to the 25. So I'm completely, completely with you. And he is sending a little bit of a contingency here. But it's nothing to write home about. Nothing that I think will do too much. But you know what? If you kill, like, say, 7 SVs or something like that, I start believing. You know, honestly, like, I mean, 20 workers is a lot, but he is going to have a faster fourth base. He is on the, the stronger army because he's playing mech as well. So mm -hmm. I could kind of, like, believe in it a little bit. Like, Kelezer has to do a lot of army catch-up right now with the initial bit of building. If he loses a couple of SCVs here as well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not completely believing Fox is out of this. I actually think this could be okay. You said seven SCVs, Cass. He's going to get pretty close to seven. He's going to get up to six. He's going to get seven. Oh, my Ugh. God, Cats, you knew. You knew what he needed. 
I he told knew you, as well. I told you. It was, it, it, this is exactly perfect. Yeah, it's just as I call the 17 roaches that got caught by that overseer. I don't know if you recall. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. The 17 roaches. Games, right? Seven roaches turned 17. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been a great day for and the Now, a 7 series just as predicted, as written, <laughs> as foretold. As foretold. Beautiful. As foretold. Beautiful. Vikings are gonna patrol the air here. I mean, I, I, I really like what Foxer has been bringing, right? All jokes aside, he's been playing a really good uh, series so far. Taking it to Kelaser. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. an easy thing to do. He's, no, I think that's what's impressive, right? Like, he's been competitive. Obviously, he won the first game. He's very competitive in this game. Uh, maybe just needed to yeah. back it up before he got a couple more reinforcements and then really kind of dig in the siege. I mean, even then, the siege initially was great for him. And he was very close to yeah. holding on the other side of the map. You know, if the fight goes slightly differently, if he gets the Raven slightly yep. sooner, he might have been able to do a lot. As Keller's obviously now trying to push into position, seeing what he can do. Yeah, or if that Liberator doesn't die to the Vikings and stuff like that, like it, like the fight resolves a little bit better for him than we're, we're talking even. As, as it stands, he's a little bit behind. But uh, yeah, certainly not without opportunities. And, and he got discombobulated at some point, right? Like units kind of derping around for a second or two, but then he just gathered up his forces and still managed to kind of like consolidate to clear uh, and push back Kelleser uh, towards the tail end of the engagement. He is, yeah, he's been good. He's been dialed in and uh, he's been trying to make it happen. I think that there's a solid chance, especially if the Vikings are in the right spot for this. Mm-hmm. This, uh, this plague is is scary. I mean, you're going to have sensor towers, They're so you got to be really careful. He's going to move uh -oh. out. Perfect opportunity for Kelazer oh, just to send it then. Yeah, this is, this is bad. Yeah, I mean, this might just be it. You're going to break through basically your biggest weakness. Your biggest weakness being the lack of ability to kind of attack into your opponent. That's just going to be fixed right now. Yeah. That is so tough. Yeah. Yep. Good play, Kelazer. Great one. Good job. Yeah, I mean, there's very little that uh, Foxer can do from this position, right? Like, the, the main is under siege, it's going to be expensive to dislodge. Yep. And Kelleser is more than happy to trade Marines <laughs> on all things. He's even going to insult to injury. Yeah. Carpet bombing the, the tank line of uh, Foxer, as he knows there's not going to be anyone home at the third. Yeah, he's done it. I mean, what a what a way to close it out in style this game number two. But I am pretty happy that we go to a, to a third. Yeah, I'm very happy to see another one, obviously. I think... Uh been having some good games here and it's clear Foxer is competitive because uh, this one obviously got a little bit out of reach a little bit out of control but you know again he's standing up to Kelleser uh, when I think a lot of people expect Kelleser to come in here and be bopping his uh, face in a little bit is not the case in the slightest so in that regard I gotta be happy yeah for sure that was really well done I, I really feel like the attack that Kelleser dislodged with the Ravens as well maybe I don't know like there must have been an opportunity for a slightly better positioning on the on the Vikings, and obviously Kelasar is gonna be looking to bait him out to, you know, to take to to take the opportunities afforded to him. But um, I felt like that position was strong, right? Like I felt like he wasn't in a good position and a good entrenched pretty well there. Yep. No, I'm. Uh, Should have been more I, difficult, I, more I, expensive I, to break out. Yeah, it was just the Raven usage, right? And it was at the right time too, because the lib was on the way, and we definitely saw how things were going yeah. in the near future, right? So. Yeah, that's true. It was, it was very close perfect, to being the perfect window. Yeah, it was the perfect great choice by Kelazo to go in that moment, take advantage when he could, exactly what he needed to do. Absolutely, yeah, I can see that. You're right. It's it's also that, right? Like the expectation of we're, we're seeing it pile up to to what it's going to be once the Liberator arrives there and and it barely it barely just doesn't arrive is what it comes down to. All right, well, it doesn't mean we get this final game, Cats. This actually is going to be the final game this time around, no messing. No matter what. No matter Unless what. there is a draw. Unless there's a draw, let me do the same game again. Again and again and again. Have there ever been more than two draws in a row? Yes. There have been three draws in a row? At a UK LAN, once upon a time. Swarmhost versus Swarmhost, entire tournament oh. got uh, messed up. In the end, the admin flipped a coin to decide who won. It was between it was between Orc and was it Mini Razor? I think it might have been Mini Razor. And, no uh, way, Mini Razor would not swarm host. Yeah, yeah, it was it was something like this, and uh, basically Mini Razor would be winning the game every single time, and Orc would just be like, 
But no, I think Orc was winning, and Mini Riz was like, well, I'm just going to swarm host and turtle up and force the draw. So this uh, happened twice, yeah, and then the main base, and, and then yes, the and I then the other you. way around it happened. So Orc was like, "Well, screw you! I'll just turtle up and I'll draw this way." So there's a big hoo ha about it. That's a big thing. I remember, I remember in a in yeah. a particularly like uh like sketchy main base it was, I think, on the map, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. very narrow corridor yeah, yeah. and like a triangle. You, yeah, yeah, you know it, you know it. <laughs> That's wild. This yeah. is way back when. Part of the swarm time. So, uh, Indeed. But yeah. here we are now in Legacy of the Void. Indeed we are. But it's not Swarmhost versus Swarmhost, but Terran versus Reapers Terran. versus Reapers. Terrans mm. versus Terrans. On the top left-hand side, it is the Terran from Tennessee, Foxer. In the bottom right, it's the Terran from pretty much everywhere in the world. Where hasn't he been? His pretty much everywhere there. in the world. Yeah, it's crazy. This man is worldwide certified. Worldwide, indeed. He doesn't know how to drive a bicycle, though. Or uh, actually, he does know. He doesn't own a bicycle in the Netherlands, which is no. weird, no? Do you know uh, that there are more bicycles than people in the Netherlands? <laughs> I'm gonna believe it, mate. I You're not gonna believe that? No, I could oh, believe can. it, honestly. Oh, okay, 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 good. But I could also understand I think like if, more you, than that one. if you didn't grow up there, learning to like ride a bike there can be kind of scary because, like, it's freaking busy and they just ride bikes all over like real quick and everything you know like, i see i see i see like yeah so... they're good at riding bikes it makes yeah exactly <laughs> right? so so if you're not used to it like i feel like it could be pretty yeah. daunting right you don't start driving on a highway right you, you go through like the easy easy yeah. streets first yeah and... exactly yeah oh my gosh Got uh, factories on either ends so a mirrored build for the time being with foxers SCV being out on the map so doing his due diligence to make sure that he is the one not getting proxied or anything like that. You'd love to see the confidence to do that. Yeah, well, just, uh, just going to match factory for factory. I mean, obviously, so far, Fox obviously playing aggressively because the double starport build is pretty aggressive too, right? Like, that's pretty committed. So... Yeah. I'm all about that. Is RCC going to drop into that natural? I'm all about it. So you see on it. either end. Okay, okay. As Nial points us over to the Reaper grenade that is thrown onto the SUV. Second Reaper now out for Foxer. Shout out to Nial. Deviation here. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. It's his first day. He's, Most he's, back, he's back tomorrow as well. Yeah, oh my god. All, all four weeks of this event. Yeah. Foxer shot his own SUV, by the way. Was... So it is very, very low. Unlike Niao's level of cooking, which is very, very high from the uh, from the word in the streets. We've had some great conversations about He ate lasagna today, today, for anyone wondering. I, know, I thought you were going to expand on what else he's been in, but... Uh, oh, no, he just ate lasagna. No, that just was the lasagna. full amount of information. Sorry, I, I, re I, I honestly... Mean, we've had all sorts of information here with Niall. I, I really thought there was something have. more coming. I just, I was just... I was just waiting for you to tell me more. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, maybe Nial could tell us more, but he'd have to unmute himself. That would be a little too wild. I don't think that people are ready for it. I have now muted him, not gonna lie. Doesn't matter what he does. At least I think I do. Don't you touch have him unmuted? <laughs> oh, yeah, just in case. For Nial. No, to help him out. Like, see, just in case he accidentally unmutes or something, right? Like, oh, I see. Him, uh, save him that the makes sense. Problem. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Like, if I was on Observer, I would probably be unmuted all the time. <laughs> all the time. Oh, all the time. Probably at least a couple of times per broadcast, I would think. And it's like, and then I would try to fix it. It would make it worse. Mm -hmm. Two Reapers going into the main here. As uh, Kelesor is trying to fix himself out of, uh, of a potential loss as the overdog. Not something that anyone enjoys. And on the other side, it's going to be Foxer applying a lot of pressure here. So that's why the two Reapers are no longer tended to, is because Foxer is microing like a madman out here, and he does manage to micro out like a madman indeed as he picks up Beautiful. the tank to escape by the by, by the by the skin of his teeth. But was that enough, Ordicho? It was beautiful, but was it enough? Uh, you know what? I mean, it was a nice little something, right? 31 to 32 workers. The game is very even still. We're looking okay for now. It seems okay to me. It was. 
I like it. I really like what Foxer did as well. He said, oh, I'm going to grab enough SCVs that I'm not, you know, if you want to micro your Reapers, best of luck. Um, but he, he kind of grabbed the right amount. It was like eight or nine SCVs, right? And it's like, okay, this should do it. And I'm going to focus my micro on the other side. So uh, so then he kind of forced Kelasor to, to look because if he wins on that side, he's going to do a lot more damage than the two Reapers can ever do uh, in time. So very mm. cool, um, you know, attention allocation and just uh, multitasking and choices there from Foxer. As a Reaper goes back into the main. Looking for a weak SCV, they will find it too. Nasty. Yep. That's going to be cheeky right there. Uh-oh, oh, this no. could go very badly wrong no. if you're not careful. Matrix on the Medivac does not go down. I thought that would have been the disaster point there. Now these tanks are going to get siege, but we do potentially have a Matrix if you want to chase it down. That's still oh a nice little God. catch from Kelazer, man. I mean, that's units you're losing as Fox that you just didn't ever want to lose. Yeah, he just wasn't expecting to be taking an engagement there at all. He was looking elsewhere, and uh, it's, it starts a little bit unfavorably for him. As he is forced to pull back. Can he actually hit the uh, gas here? I guess he can. Very cool. That's something. Mm -hmm. There's not enough Vikings here. Yeah, I mean, air control is obviously a big deal. And, and to be aggressive, you kind of need air control. So the fact that Kellers is just holding that is, is really great for him. Puts him in a, in a very uh -oh. good spot. And this is very scary indeed, as uh, the, yeah, the Raven's gonna go to the back lines and drop Ooh. its turrets to isolate a lot of these yeah, units. Nice the catch. Vikings also land to make sure that he can continue to kill everything. And Kelasur moving across the map unopposed, where Dicho, I think, he is just about to do it here. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's just gonna as drop these Vikings down. He's gonna make a bit of a move right here. This is gonna be his play. The just have barely out of position. I mean, pushing into the natural expansion is obviously a great position to be in as well, so it's in a good spot, and it does look as though this is going to be a great spot for Keller's as he just forces his way Ooh. across the map, catching oh, those no. units. Made a hell of a yeah, difference. I really needed that Viking. Yeah. I really needed that Viking because that's the one that made the difference in terms of like who had the uh, the air superiority, but after losing it, now Keller's is the one with the advantage on every single front, so... Yeah, it's looking near impossible now for Foxer. At some point, I could I could see what he was thinking because he had a Liberator in production and he had seven Vikings landed uh, as they continued to wait for their, you know, to, for for the next Viking to to have enough. But mm -hmm. then one of them got picked off, and then it was even numbers. And he was forced to go out to defend his command center, and now it looks very over where they chose. Yep, it is definitely not looking too pretty at all. It's looking pretty darn miserable, in fact. As so we are going to be seeing. This is uh, likely going to be the end. Yeah, there's no way. He's going to attempt at a siege at some point, trying to bait the Marines into some... I don't even know. It's tough. I mean, there is a position to siege those two tanks, right? From, from, up, from up here, maybe. And then uh, just fight for air superiority, where the Marines can't really participate. Yeah. No, but, I mean, I mean, you got to try everything, right? You, you know, in game number three. Like, if you're gonna try something, you might as well try something, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, you got to give give it a go, right? It's you know, you're opening match for Americas. You you're not gonna give it up easy. You fought hard to That's qualify for this tournament. Why would you give it up? For sure. Nice enough Vikings to one shot here, but the Marines are also in position to get rid of the Liberator or not? Okay. Come back. Unlikely. Yeah, Vikings are going to land here to play the protection game. Tanks are going to siege up even further forward. I mean, it's it's a little messy. You, it's a little messy, but it's getting If you gave this done. game to Maru, <laughs> if you gave this game to Maru and you didn't tell Kelleser, do you think he could come back? No. This is, this is no, tough. right? That's Half the thing. The is, yeah, Kelleser. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's Kelleser this time. <laughs> is, that yeah. what, is that what we're going with? Like, Kelleser can beat Maru from the beginning, so, you know. Mm, I, see. I feel like this game he would close out. I see, I see. <laughs> Did take a game in Atlanta, right? I believe. I don't remember. I think so. Okay, well, he's dead for sure. That is the question. That is the question to ask, right? If you could give this game to Serral slash Maru slash Max Pax or Hero, could they win? And if the answer is no, then the game is safe to call 